broader political risk. Analyst and joins me from Taipei. Great to have you on the programme. Welcome to you. Um, how will the late president be remembered and what will be his legacy? Well, he'll be remembered for uh, overseeing the transition from an authoritarian society uh, that had existed for nearly 40 years on Taiwan, most of that time under martial law, to a society that functions uh, with the same democratic structures as we often see in Western countries or in Japan, Korea, and Australia here in the Pacific region. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, one of the reforms that he instituted was the direct election of the president by the voters as opposed to being elected by one of the houses at the time of, of Taiwan's legislature. Uh, the uh, other significant contribution and legacy would be to really go down the road of separating Taiwan uh, from China, which his predecessors during the uh, authoritarian government era ha had a very different view on. They viewed the two sides as uh, temporarily separated due to a civil war. But Li Donghui took the view, and, and that's generally supported by the people here in Taiwan, uh, that, that Taiwan really uh, should be treated as a separate country from China. And how significant is it that the U.S. has sent a delegation to his memorial? Well, this is a very good question, simply because there, there's been uh, some debate, or you could even say confusion, here in Taiwan about uh, whether the visit was for the purposes of attending this memorial, or was it for economic uh, trade talks between Taiwan and the U.S. following certain uh, uh, movements by the Taiwan side that uh, has led to uh, calls from the U.S. side, uh, calls in Congress, that is, uh, to enter into free trade negotiations. And, and given Mr. Crash's portfolio at the State Department, uh, it's easy to assume that he was here to talk more about trade issues, but it turns out that this memorial ceremony was also occurring. And then eventually the Taiwan government said, no, he's not here to talk about trade negotiations. He's actually here to attend uh, the memorial for Li Dong Hoi. Uh, so that's still a matter of some speculation. But uh, look, he, he, he happened to be here. He attended. Japan also uh, sent a former uh, office holder to attend. Uh, so, you know, the Taiwan people are happy that there is this high-level representation from overseas. And, Ross, we've seen China's uh, response of live fire exercises off the coast of Taiwan. Um, what is China hoping to achieve with this? Well, China's expressing its, its displeasure at the visit by a, a high-level U.S. government official. Uh, we have to keep in mind this is a pattern, though, that uh, ever since Tsai Ing-wen was first elected in 2016, re-elected this past January, that China has increased the, the scale, the scope, the frequency of its military exercises, the, the proximity that these exercises take place uh, near Taiwan, the type of assets that China is using. All of this continues to increase. So any action that the United States or Japan or other countries take uh, to have a more normal relationship with Taiwan will be met by uh, these kinds of actions by China. And, and frankly, we'll be seeing more of this. And then it's going to be up to Taiwan and its close partners, such as the United States, to respond appropriately. Ross Fengol, thank you so much for your analysis and your time. Appreciate it.